All right, let's now figure out the mechanics of Gaussian elimination. We'll first do it from the equations point of view, and then we'll go back to our familiar and better column-wise perspective. Now, the idea of Gaussian elimination is to replace as many coefficients with zeros as possible. Now, of course, you can't go about it all willy-nilly. You have to do it in such a way that the general solution of the system is unchanged, so that the system keeps its set of solutions. So what are some of the things that we can do to the equations that won't alter the solution set? Well, one of the things you can do is multiply an entire equation by a number. So we're going to multiply the first equation by 4. Looking ahead, I want this coefficient to match this coefficient. That's why I'm choosing 4. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by 4. And of course, it doesn't change the solutions because if x, y, and z are such that this relationship is satisfied, then they will also satisfy the relationship where the left-hand side is multiplied by 4 and the right-hand side is 12, 3 times 4. So that's certainly a valid operation you can perform on the system of equations or a single equation that won't change its solution. Okay, so let's do that. So multiplying the entire first equation by 4 puts a 4 here, I can do this without erasing, an 8 here, and a 12 here. And the whole thing equals 12. So now we have a system. Nothing has been eliminated yet, but at the very least we still have a system that has the same set of solutions as before. So we didn't make anything better, but at least we didn't make anything worse. And one thing that we've learned is that what we can do is multiply an entire equation by a number. And in the matrix form, the corresponding operation is multiplying an entire row by a number. 8, 12, and 12 in this entry. So that's why Gaussian elimination is said to consist of row operations. Okay, so now we'll actually perform another operation that on the one hand doesn't change the set of solutions, but on the other eliminates one of the coefficients, making the whole system sparser, and hopefully the relationships that we're after will be easier to see, or at least a little bit easier to see. So that calls for another quote-unquote row operation, and that's adding or subtracting one row to another, or from another. So what we're going to do, and right now we're talking about equations, so I should have said adding or subtracting one equation to or from another. So what we're going to do is subtract first equation from the second equation. So the first equation will remain unchanged, but the second equation, excuse me, but the second equation 4x minus 4x will completely lose its first term. And now you understand the meaning of the term elimination. Okay? In the second position, we will have 5 minus 8, because we're subtracting first from second. So now the second coefficient will be minus 3. This coefficient will be minus 6, because it's 6 minus 12. Just keep in mind that we're subtracting first equation from second. So minus 6 in this position, and minus 3 on the right-hand side. So once again, we have a system that has the same set of solutions as the original system, but it's a little bit simpler. We have simplified it because this term is now missing. Let's now reflect the same change in the matrix form. This 4 is gone, and it's actually customary to either write zero or to leave the entry completely blank. That's one of the advantages of the matrix notation, as opposed to the decomposition notation that we considered in between the systems notation, the equations notation, and the matrix notation. So we're just going to leave it blank, meaning zero. The five became a minus three. The six became a minus six. And the nine became a minus 3. So that's another row operation. Adding or subtracting one row from another. 
which only changes the row that's being added to or subtracted from. So here's an interesting thing. What we can also do now is go ahead and divide the first equation by 4 again. So it goes back to its original form. So we can get it ready for eliminating the 7. Because right now, what I would need to do to prime it for eliminating this 7 would be to multiply by 7 fourths. So that I have 7 in this position. And multiplying by 7 fourths could be a little cumbersome. So let's just divide it by 4 and then start again. Multiply the first equation by 7 and subtract it from the third equation, thus eliminating the 7. So we'll actually project that action, but we won't actually do it. We'll stop short of it. So going back, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 2, and this will be a 3. 1, 2, 3 equals 3. And let's affect the same change here. So 1, 2, and 3 in the first row. And a 3 on the right-hand side. And now let's think about what we did effectively. The effective, the combined effect of the last three operations that we performed, which was to multiply the first equation by 4, subtract it from the second, and then divide it by 4 again, was basically to subtract a multiple of the first equation from the second. So the way this system is obtained from the original equation is, look, the first equation is unchanged, the second equation is unchanged, and all we did was subtract a multiple of the first equation, times 4, first equation, 4 of the first equation, from the second equation. So that's actually what we'll do more often than any other operation, and that is not multiply a, an equation by a number and then add or subtract it from another equation, but leave that equation unchanged and simply add or subtract a multiple of that equation from another equation. Or in the matrix language, we would subtract or add, add or subtract, subtract, we would add or subtract a multiple of one row from another. That's the primary row operation of Gaussian elimination. That's the one that's used most frequently, and it's actually nicer than the rest in a certain sense that we will learn later. So the primary row operation that doesn't change the set of solutions but can be used for eliminating coefficients as we did here is adding or subtracting, which is the same thing because you can always multiply by a negative number and then add. So we'll just start saying add. Well, we'll continue saying subtract if it's convenient. So adding a multiple of one row to another. And just remember to keep doing the same thing to the vector on the right hand side as well. Okay, so that's the primary operation of Gaussian elimination. Another one, and it's usually used for a different reason, is the one that we're already familiar with, which is multiplying an entire row across to the right hand side by a number. And that is usually done to turn a number into a 1. For example, here we ended up with a 3, but you will learn that it's advantageous to have ones in these critical positions, to have ones for coefficients that we use to eliminate other coefficients. These very special positions, and I'm just projecting onto the second step uh, of Gaussian elimination, are called pivots. And you want pivots to be ones. So we'll learn about pivots and so forth a little bit later. And the way this can be achieved is by multiplying the entire second row by negative one-third. So in this case, we multiplied an entire equation or an entire row by four, but we can use any number. So in this case, a good number to multiply by would be negative one-third, or we could paraphrase it as dividing by negative three. That would give us one, two, one, and make the system even simpler than it is now. So those are the two operations that we've learned so far. There is one more. In terms of equations, it's switching two equations around. Now at this point, it may not be obvious how that operation can be used to make a system simpler because you end up with the same set of equations. But you'll see there is a standard way of doing 
Gauss elimination, a conventional way that calls for the pivots uh, to appear in specific rows. And in order to achieve that, you may sometimes need to switch equations around. Or, in terms of matrices, to switch the rows around. And once again, remember to switch the numbers on the right-hand side as well. Just because you should think, as we're doing right now, of what we're doing as manipulating equations. So if you switch two equations, of course the right-hand sides need to be switched as well. So there you go. There are three Gaussian elimination operations, which we can, inspired by the matrix perspective, call the row operations. One, adding a multiple of one row to another. Two, multiplying a row by a number. And three, switching rows. So those are the only three things that you can do in trying to eliminate as many entries as possible. So those are the rules of the game. Everything else is experience and practice. Now what we're going to do in the next video is revisit these same row operations, but think of the effect on the system, not from the point of view of equations, but from the point of view of relationships among columns and the relationship of the right-hand side to the columns on the left-hand side, which is our dominant perspective. And it will be a very helpful and insightful discussion. And then we'll embark on practice. We'll practice Gauss elimination on as many problems as we possibly can. And we'll learn a lot from that practice as well.